Flavor family, what is up? It is Art and Bobby back at Trader Joe's. You know, we've only been kicked out every time we've been here, but that's not gonna stop us because I've heard the third time is actually the charm, right? And we have to come back because I'm enthralled with the frozen food department here at Trader Joe's. It's uniquely Trader Joe's. They have no outside parties here. It's basically Trader Joe's, Trader Giotto's, Trader Ming's, all that good stuff. And we did that big frozen food review last weekend. So I thought we should do one for Trader Joe's because I know how much you like it. And I think this video is gonna be a little unique because we have to fly under the radar. I really don't wanna get kicked out for this one as much as we love. Trader Joe's, we gotta get the video done. So before we go in there, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Click that red subscribe button and better yet, you know what, there's a bell icon right below the video. Go ahead, <laughs> Woo. I haven't worked out today and enable all notifications because every single week we have four videos going live and you do not want to miss them. We have a live stream, we have three cooking videos, we have grocery store videos and all that good stuff. Now, let's be undercover brother, go into Trader Joe's and see what we can do. All right, I have some grass-fed beef in my hand, but the frozen grass-fed beef is actually something I want you to stay away from here at Trader Joe's because we're trained to look for two things, either 100% grass-fed or grass-fed and grass-finished. So if I look at the burgers here, it says grass-fed, but nowhere does it say 100% or grass-finished. So this actually is a no-no. Then they have these bricks, these bricks of 8515 ground beef. But once again, it says nowhere on here that's 100%. The only place it says 100% is the fresh one pound block. And the thing is, I've tried this before. The texture of this ground beef is a little stringy. So I actually prefer to get that at Aldi or uh, Costco has the best deal on frozen burger beef patties. And also Walmart has 80, 20, 100% ground beef and organic. So this is actually something I'd stay away from. If I reach over here, this is the place I always go to buy Asi frozen packets. I always talk to you guys about not buying the frozen bowls or the frozen smoothies because they're jacked up with sugars. This is unbelievable. It's a pack of $4.49 for four packets. And look at the ingredients. There's no sugar added. This is just pure ACE. You make your own bowls at home with like almond butter and coconut milk and almond milk and frozen blueberries. That's what you want to eat. Not the pre-made pre ones, pre ones that have tons of sugar. Then right in front of me here is a new, relatively new item. It's a shakshuka starter kit. It says bring your own eggs. And the ingredients are fantastic. There's really no preservatives. They use olive oil and very good oil. That's one of the things we talked about previously here at Trader Joe's. They have a love affair with different varieties of oil. Sometimes I use the best, like olive oil or extra virgin olive oil, but other products I'll show you sometimes have the worst uh, oil here, like canola oil or soybean oil. But this is super, super cool. All right, let's switch over to B-roll because the employees are on to us. This is a very, very popular thing here at Trader Joe's, the cauliflower gnocchi. I do want to let you know though, it's not low carb. Just because it's cauliflower, look what they use, you guys. Cassava flour and potato starch. So actually the carbs are quite high. It's 22 per serving, but the ingredients are very good. They're using the best in-class oil, extra virgin olive oil with minimal ingredients. No preservatives, no filler. So it's actually very Bobby approved. Don't be confused though. It is not low carb, but it is high quality. And the price, look at this, Art, $2.69. That is not bad at all. This is cheesy, Spaghetti squash casserole. And spaghetti squash is low carb, but once again, this is not low carb because if you read the ingredients, it has breadcrumbs made with flour and it has a bechamel sauce in here. A bechamel sauce is butter, flour, and milk. So it's not low carb, but it relatively is clean here. The cheesy spaghetti squash is $4.99, so not too bad. Now, this is actually very cool. This is riced cauliflower and butternut squash risotto. And I love these flavors because they're very fall. But look at the ingredients here, you guys. We have some really nice ingredients. Real cream, extra virgin olive oil again. I don't like the fact they're using yeast extract. So when you see something that says yeast extract, in your mind think, okay, that's another word for MSG. Yeast extract is a chemically made flavor enhancer. It excites your taste buds and your brain. So I don't love to see that, but that's really the only suspect thing here. And this actually is pretty keto approved. Seven total carbs two grams of uh, fiber, so five net carbs per serving. There's three servings in here. So we're talking about 15 net carbs. This is Bobby approved and keto approved. It does have the yeast extract, but I'm still okay with that. And it's a product of Italy. Yeah, that's right, it is. Look at this, you guys. Product of Italy, right? I think Italy says, hey, we don't want any of the cauliflower, so let's just send it over to the Americans. And this is 369 here. And then, all right, when you see stuff like this, carrot spirals and zucchini spirals, even though 
it is very clean and zucchini is low carb. When you freeze uh, vegetables like this, ice crystals form in the cell walls. And when I thaw this out, it's actually going to get very wet and soggy. So if you don't want to make your own, buy the pre-made ones in the produce department. It's way better. This is a hugely popular, probably the best. Actually, no, it says right here, look at this. Number one customer favorite, Trader Ming's Mandarin Orange Chicken. The problem is, you guys, I'm not loving the ingredients. So the actual part here for the chicken is not too bad, but the sauce has a lot of sugar. It has some preservatives here. They're using soybean oil, even though, even though Trader Joe's is non-GMO. I really wonder if all their ingredients are non-GMO and it's a highly processed, highly refined oil. So that's an example of good and bad oils. So I would pass on that. And the price of, I mean, the price isn't bad, it's $4.99. All right, let's switch back to wide angle while we got a break from the Waldos. Let's talk about ice cream. Ice cream here is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde because a lot of the ingredients here have natural flavors or carrageenan. So if you like the Trader Joe's gelato, I would think twice because a lot of the flavors here have carrageenan, natural flavors, and look at that laundry list of ingredients. Carrageenan is a seaweed emulsifier that can wreak havoc on your stomach and your uh, gut and your intestines. I would just not, not use that. They put that in a lot of stuff here at Trader Joe's, like their uh, cream, unless you buy the organic cream. If you're dairy free, you get this chocolate one here with made with coconut milk. The problem is, even though it's less ingredients, they put carrageenan and mono and diglycerides, which is a form of uh, trans fatty acid, so I would stay away from that. The best bet is their version of uh, Halo Top. This is the low fat, high protein, but I would stick with the peanut butter one because it's much cleaner than the cookies and cream. But the whole carton here, you guys, only has 12 grams of fat and sugars are 10 grams per serving. Uh, ice cream normally has about 18 to 20. So this is actually clean with none of those bad ingredients and some of the sweeteners coming from monk fruit, which is fantastic. And they have a new fall or winter flavor here called maple ginger cookie swirl. Huge list of ingredients here, including tons of natural flavorings, a few preservatives. So I'd stay away from this one too. But this is once again, we have to read the label because sometimes they're using good quality ingredients and sometimes they use bad. But as soon as you identify them, you know which ones to avoid and which ones to buy. All right, I got some of your favorite items here at Trader Joe's, including the famed cauliflower pizza crust and new for the fall and winter, butternut squash pizza crust. Once again, don't think those are low carb. Look at the ingredients. These are loaded with corn flour, corn starch, and potato starch. Once again, they say everything here is GMO free at Trader Joe's. I'm gonna have to take their word for that. But the cauliflower pizza crust, you guys, has a whopping 100 grams of carbs in here. I've tried seven ways to Sunday to try to make this crispy, I can't. The, in, the instructions here are like a, a puzzle, like flip it, flip it again, flip it again, broil it. I just don't love this one. I have a recipe for uh, paleo, meaning grain-free and dairy-free cauliflower pizza crust. I'll put that link down below. Same thing with the squash, slightly less uh, carbs, but made with corn flour, corn starch, and potato starch. These are just carb bombs. And my problem with this much starch, even though it's gluten-free, it spikes your blood sugars, right? This is not the kind of simple carbohydrates you want to eat. Then we're going to go over the burgers in a second. They have fries here. And if you watch my frozen food review last week, which I highly recommend you do after we're done with this one, these are the kind of fries you want to stay away from because they're not organic. I love to uh, eat organic potatoes and they're cooked with bad quality oil. The handsome cut fries, Art and I still can't figure out what a handsome french fry is, but I mean, it's quite good looking, I'm gonna say. But it's cooked in soybean oil and canola, highly processed and highly refined. Sure, it's GMO free, because it's here at, at Trader Joe's. But when you process uh, oil at that amount of high heat, you damage the fatty acid, and they use a chemical called hexane to extract the oil. And the sweet potatoes are cooked, once again, in soybean oil. Have a few extra additives here I don't love. Get the organic uh, potatoes frozen fries at Whole Foods. They're non-GMO. They use good quality expeller pressed oil. These I just wouldn't pick up. So let me put these back and I'll grab the burgers here, including veggie burgers. We'll talk about that really quick. All right, I've got a good variety of burgers here. Let's start with the high protein veggie burger from Trader Joe's. Once again, a lot of these burgers have that Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde relationship with the ingredients. I love the fact that they're using pea protein. I try to stay away from soy protein isolate. I'm just not a big fan. Pea protein is a very complex protein that's great for vegetarians. 
They're using expeller pressed canola oil. When I see canola, I want it to be non-GMO and expeller pressed. Expeller pressed means it's not highly refined. So we're off to a great start. The only two ingredients I don't like in here is natural flavors. If you don't want to eat artificial flavorings, don't eat our natural flavorings. And they put caramel coloring. Caramel coloring is a food color that is a known carcinogen, and they do it just to make the burger look brown. So I can't get behind this one, but in the frozen food review, I show you some really good ones, including my man, Dr. Prager. He's doing veggie burgers right, because we look at the ingredients here, and he's using expeller pressed canola oil, a ton of natural vegetables, really no filler here. There's a little bit of soybeans, but it's non-GMO. This is good. He's got a couple varieties that are very, very good. And Waldo. Okay, and then going on to another great name, the Quinoa Cowboy Veggie Burger. This one is actually very good. And I love the fact that they're using whole grains here, gluten-free grains in the form of quinoa. It's not a gluten-free burger because they are using breadcrumbs as a binder but the rest of the ingredients here are very clean. This might be the best in class veggie burger for Trader Joe's brand here. And just to go to that other side, the ugly side of uh, burgers here, these are the premium salmon burgers. They're not using high quality wild or high quality farm raised salmon. Yes, there is such a thing as called high quality farm raised. It's Norwegian uh, salmon that's very ethically and responsibly farm raised. But guys, look at these ingredients here. They're using carrageenan in a salmon burger. Why would they do that? Maltodextrin, maltodextrin is made from corn, usually GMO corn, but we'll believe them that it's non-GMO here. But it spikes your blood sugars because it's high in the glycemic index and natural flavorings in the burger here. So this is a major no, but we have a few good options here. So let me go put these away and round up some more items. All right, the Waldos are catching a scent of what we're doing. So we're gonna switch back over to B-roll. Before I do, there's a good way to do meatless and a bad way. These meatless breakfast patties are the bad way. We look at the ingredients here. They're using a lot of soy protein. They're using a lot of preservatives, carrageenan, caramel coloring, yeast extract. Sometimes when you try to do a good thing by making something vegan, you actually do a bad thing. This is a bad thing. Why they're adding all these ingredients, I have no idea. So I would stay away from that. Art, undercover brother style. Let's keep on rolling along here. All right, you might get excited when you see this riced cauliflower stir fry here because you think it's low carb. And actually it is relatively low carb and has the same uh, carb count as the uh, risotto. But my problem is the ingredients here. They're using a little bit of maltodextrin, which is that food preservative here. And they're using a little bit of cornstarch, which I don't love. Overall, not bad, but I would stick with the uh, cauliflower risotto, much better. If we come down here, these are actually Israeli frozen garlic and ginger and they have cilantro too that's a great idea in case you don't have fresh ones on hand but read the ingredients there you guys it has cornstarch in there which probably is gmo and the garlic here also has canola oil which is highly processed so i would not use these but it's a really really good idea it's always good idea to have frozen stuff like peas and corn in your freezer because when it's off season these are almost as good as fresh and you don't have to buy the organic corn here at Trader Joe's because everything's non-GMO, right? So you can get the regular one here, but I find this super sweet organic one is actually really good. I put it in a veggie chili recently and it's, uh, it was fantastic. So I would always have a bag or two of those in my freezer. And then speaking of stuff to have in my freezer, you have a few options here for frozen rice. I would get the organic brown rice. It's a bit cleaner. And it's great to have this because even though it's not paleo or keto, if you want to make fried rice, it's ready already. And the key to making really good fried rice is to pre-make it ahead of time. And this is actually has the right texture. It's a little al dente and it soaks up the flavors of the pan perfectly. So I would always have one of these in my freezer. Okay, if you're trying to pick the best pizza here at Trader Joe's, it's very tricky because all of these pizzas, even the organic ones, are relatively clean. I'm impressed by the minimal ingredients, but every single one in the crust uses sunflower oil. It's not non, it's not expeller pressed, it's traditional. So if I go for the organic or even the pizzeria margarita here, it's always with sunflower oil. So I really wish that were expeller pressed because the rest of the ingredients are super clean here. And then I have no problem buying seafood frozen. Actually the seafood you get at the fishmonger in the grocery store comes frozen, they thought. So Buying the wild salmon here is actually not a bad deal. It's uh, $10.99 a pound. It's cheaper at certain places, but it's convenient to have some. And you have to know where some of the fish comes from because the tilapia here is not high quality farm raised. I don't eat much tilapia because the nutritional profile is not good, meaning it has high omega-6s. But this one here is from Indonesia and they don't have the best farming practices. 
I have no problem buying Alaskan wild caught cod here or Dovo sole. Just if it's farm raised, know the quality of the farming and be careful because it has to be Norwegian for salmon. All right, I can't leave the burger section without talking about the turkey burgers. If we look at the ingredients, super clean. Just a few. They're using rosemary extract, not rosemary natural flavors. I wish it was organic turkey or pasture raised turkey. That being said, it's still relatively clean, so I'm okay with that. I'd much rather you get that one than the salmon burger. They have chili lime burgers here. Let me see the ingredients on this one. And this one, see, has natural flavor. See that? So I would stick with the turkey burger because they don't need to sneak that in there. I don't know why they are, but that makes it a no for me. So we pretty much covered all the burgers here. All right, we can't end this video without talking about chicken tenders or chicken nuggets. This is their version of a chicken tender. Red flag goes up immediately. Why? Look at that laundry list of ingredients. That's way too long, you guys. And I start reading, I see what's the breading made out of? It's made out of wheat, which is fine, but it's in soybean oil. Once again, Trader Joe's is either using really good oil, like we saw extra virgin, or really cruddy oil, like highly processed and refined soybean oil. We also see dextrose. Dextrose is another way, word for sugar, sneaking more refined sugar in there, which we don't need. And you know what? In the frozen food video last week, Applegate Farms makes a fantastic one, gluten-free and regular, that has barely any ingredients. Heck, even the Tyson All Natural is better than this. So I would pass on that. And then I see out of the corner of my eye here, chicken burrito bowl. And I'm actually very happy because this one is very clean. Why can't any of these frozen ones use at least organic chicken, organic protein, and be 100% organic? You know who does that? Amy's. Once again, if you watch the uh, frozen, Amy is killing it. And it's 100% organic. So this has no filler here. Actually, everything is very, very clean. So I think that is just about it here. Let me just take a peek at this gluten-free uh, mac and cheese here and stuff. All right, so actually, the mac and cheese and the gluten-free mac and cheese is pretty clean. For the gluten-free, they're using corn flour, rice flour, two of the higher starch, simple carbohydrate uh, flours I don't love, but they're also using quinoa and lentil flour, which is more complex. But the rest of this ingredients are pretty clean, and the same is true for the traditional mac and cheese, so not too bad for a uh, processed cheese product. Art, do you believe in miracles? Yes! You guys, we did not get kicked out of Trader Joe's, Woohoo! Uh, we did almost at the end. The manager asked us what we were doing, and I said, we're just taking photos for our blog. We got away with it. And that's all that counts because this review <laughs> had to be done. Are we getting weird looks here? <laughs> um, you guys, subscribe, like, and share. These videos are a lot of work to make, and plus, the new Flay City podcast is out. New episodes every Tuesday. Art and I walk you around the grocery store. We got two more of those videos going below us right now. But Art and I will see you very soon. And we say unto you like we always do. Hashtag keep on cooking, mad love, and peace.